So now uh, we're pulling the frets out of the fingerboard after we've uh, scored the lacquer. And uh, now we're going to be using a, a solder iron and my fret pullers here to uh, soften up the glue, loosen up the glue if there is any. And it, it kind of helps to expand the wood around the tang so we can get the fret out a lot easier. So we have, again, less chip out, less blowout of uh, the wood when we're pulling the frets out of the fingerboard. You know, again, with everything, um, it takes time, it takes patience, because you don't want the solder iron to slip, you don't want to um, burn the fingerboard or the lacquer. You want to slowly walk the uh, solder iron across the fret, like five to seven seconds in each spot and then work your way across. If you start to, and you want to watch very closely, if you start to see the lacquer bubbling or boiling, you know, you got to move on. You don't want to stay in one place too long, but you got to be there long enough to soften things up. And there we go, out comes the fret without uh, any blowout or chip out on the fingerboard. That's the uh, results we're looking for. Nice and clean. Now, typically, um, you've got to plane the fingerboard because you got to get all the little idiosyncrasies out of the board after it's settled over some time. Um, so first, we want to make sure the fingerboard is, you know, pretty much as straight as we can. And in this case, we have to remove the finish, remove the lacquer off the finish board. So I'm just going to check. It looks really good here with a slight back bow in it. So I'm going to loosen the truss rod a little bit. Get it really as straight as I can. before I start removing the finish because I don't want to really change the shape of the neck if I don't have to. That looks good. Maybe just a, a shade more and then we're going to clamp it down so it doesn't wander around. And not too hard because if you really clamp it hard it tends to make the neck back bow. So. Now I'm using a radius block. I had these especially made on a CNC machine. This is a seven and a quarter radius that a vintage fender has. And I've actually checked that to make sure from end to end that it actually has a seven and a quarter radius. <laughs> so I'm not just guessing. And then I just want to start removing the finish. You know, if there's a lot of finish on a neck, um, I might scrape the finish off. This way I'm not clogging up the sandpaper and using a lot of sandpaper. So I can take some of the finish off carefully, again. And you don't want to go straight at the fret slot because then it starts to create divots. So you got to go on a little bit of an angle to get the finish off. You can also use a razor blade. I'm just used to using this this scraper I've had forever that I actually shape necks with when I'm carving necks. And again, I'm really lightly taking the finish off of this fingerboard. I do not want to affect the shape or the radius any. So I only want to take off finish and not wood.
So after I've gotten all the finish off, I am um, I'm using, using pretty heavy paper when I'm taking the finish off. Just to get the finish off, I was using 60 grit. Because you don't want to tear into it because you don't want to have a, you know, sanding marks in the fingerboard, in the, in the wood. So after I've got that off, now I've got 100 grit. Just to smooth things out. After that's done, um, I want to keep checking my neck just to make sure it's straight. And looks really good right now. So now we're uh, ready to plane the fingerboard. Now in this case, the fingerboard is a little high on the end. Um, gets a little ski slope down here, which is very typical for a fender neck. That's why they tend to, your notes tend to choke out when you're up here bending high. Um, so we want to remove that down here and yet keep the radius. Um, so in this case, uh, we're having we have a seven and a quarter radius all the way on this fingerboard right now it's it's nice and straight after i planed it we're going to a nine five at the end of the fingerboard radius it's a little flatter so the notes don't choke out as as much because it's a little higher up here and we're going to take wood off here so after i've used our seven and a quarter on the whole fingerboard using long strokes Again, to maintain that radius. And then I'm doing a compound radius on this up high. It, sometimes it doesn't take much. In this case, just so not to bore you, I, I've already done this work. I've, I've pre-done my radius. Now I've got a little fall off at the top of the fingerboard here. Where it's actually, it slopes down a little, so it's a little lower than the rest of the neck. I've got a nice straight neck with a bit of a fall off on the edge of the fingerboard. So it's really going to play and perform a lot better this way. So fingerboard is prepped and planed.